Hey everyone, welcome back. Sergeant Eaters here with the Wyoming National Guard Counter Drug Program. So today we have a topic that most people aren't aware about, that being p-values. So before we talk about p-values and what exactly those are, we need to understand a little bit about correlation and causation. Let me give you an example. So to understand correlation versus causation, my favorite example of this is with ice cream sales. So let's pretend that this is a graph that shows ice cream sales. We see at the beginning of the year, there's lower sales. It's usually cold outside. And then as you get towards the middle of the summer, uh, basically sales go up, which is normal for every ice cream store. But now we have to add crime in there. So crime, as we know it as well, starts low. A lot of people aren't out committing crimes in the winter. And as it hits summer, it begins to peak and crime rates go up in the summer almost everywhere across the nation and then come back down as it gets into those colder months again. Now, my question for you would be, do ice cream sales cause crime? Maybe a proposal to our government should be that we ban ice cream. Obviously, we know that's not going to work. And here's why. Yes, ice cream sales are correlated with the same statistics as far as they go up in sales in the summer and down in the winter, just like crime goes up in summer and down in the winter, but it's correlated. There's no causation of ice cream sales actually making the crime rate go up. That's correlation versus causation. And now that we know there's a difference between correlation and causation, that brings us back to p-values and why p-values are so important. So for most of you, getting the actual mathematical equation and figuring out what a p-value is and how to calculate it doesn't matter. What's really important for you as a prevention specialist is to be able to look at programs and find out if those p-values are actually correlating to a lowered substance use or desired result that you want to come out of a program that you're implementing. So let's talk about how to figure that out. So these are two very important numbers to know related to p-value and statistical analysis. So 0 0.001 is actually the most statistically significant something can get, meaning that if you know a program is causing something to happen and it's for sure because of that program, this is probably what the math would lead out to be. Now, it's important to also know that some things have asterisks related to the program that they've implemented and that the more asterisks there are, usually the more statistically significant that thing that they studied is. Now, 0 0.050 is an important number related to p-values because for anything to be causated by a program you're implementing, 0 0.050 is the highest this number can ever be to show statistical significance. Now, at the end of the day, to bring p-value and statistical significance to relevancy of why you're hearing about it, it is because p-value is saying that it's causing something to happen versus correlation when we talked about ice cream sales. Ice cream sales were correlated to crime going up, but if something had a p-value of 0 0.001 related to crime, it would say that this variable is causing crime. So now you may be wondering, okay, that's great knowledge. Now I know we need to have the p-values at a certain range. Where do I go look for those? But don't worry, we got you covered. So one place we go to is the Washington State Institute for Public Policy. Now. We go here because this is all independently studied and provided by their taxpayers through their legislature for their university to study these different programs being implemented across their state. I like this place because it is an independent study, so there's no funding saying, hey, find out that this works or, hey, find out that this doesn't work. It's very much a non-biased study. But you do need to look at different places to make sure that the study is replicable and that the same things are happening in multiple different studies. And I think that's one thing that makes it really hard is finding replicable studies that aren't done from just the company themselves. Now, for these studies to happen, it takes a bunch of people in a team. They have to study the kids, make sure they follow them for years. They have to always be monitoring and making sure that what the program is doing is specifically getting at the outcome measured. So for example, in this one, the very first thing is K-12 grade repetition. Now, is that statistically significant? Now we have to go over here to the p-value to find out it's 0 0.063, which is not 
the correct number. We need 0 0.050 or less. All right, so I highlighted the things that are all statistically significant based off of their p-values being 0 0.050 or less. There's a lot of different things that this program specifically did help with. Now, this program in particular is Positive Action. Positive Action is a program that we implement across the state and are actually teaching students already um, all over the state. So I re-highlighted everything that is actually statistically significant from this program. Now, that being said, let's get into the program a little bit more. So this program is Positive Action. Positive Action is a program that we actually are already implementing across the state. Now, the other reason I like getting this independent study from the Washington State Institute is because they give a benefit to cost breakdown and the benefit to society and to the person that has been taught in this program is about $47,000 positive. While if you were to look on their site, there's tons that are actually negative or way less benefit to society. So that being said, let's get into the breakdown of p-values. Now there's a variety of different numbers here, but all the ones highlighted are 0 0.050 0 or less. There was one that is 0 0.052 that did not make the cut, but was pretty close to showing causation. Now the things that did show causation, I'm gonna read them off for you, are suspensions and expulsions were down, test scores were up, office discipline referrals were down, alcohol, cannabis, smoking, and illicit drug use all down and prolonged towards after middle school. Anxiety disorder and major depressive disorder are both down. The initiation of sexual activity was down and body mass index was down as well. So this program needs 22 lessons in the effectiveness to get all of these things to happen. Now that's 22 lessons per student. And the lessons for this, I think, are roughly 15 to 20 minutes, depending on the grade level and what group you're working with. So that's an example of positive action. The next program I'm gonna bring up is not a knock towards them. Some people love the program, some people hate the program, but it's one that I can bring up and show you the evidence on. Now, the next program I wanna talk about is definitely something that most of us have experienced. It's the D.A.R.E. program. Now, they switch it to keeping it real as they have claimed and the company has claimed that they've revamped the curriculum and everything. Again, maybe they have, maybe it works. Based off of this one independent study done by this group, they happen to find that smoking before end of middle school, cannabis use before the end of middle school, and alcohol use before the end of middle school, they were able to find no statistical evidence that this program was causing those things to happen. So again, they could have studied more stuff like they did with the positive action program. I think what they were mainly focused on was these things and if dare or keeping it real was working and really it doesn't look like it is. So again, I don't wanna just look at one study. I wanted to look at multiple. So I looked up on perplexity is there anything related to D.A.R.E. that's showing it is working? And from what I could find from all the studies is that it's not working to show actual causation that it does. But there is some studies that have come out that they copied D.A.R.E.-like programs and basically it showed an inverse effect. Now, one more thing that I should have mentioned is that a recent study for us in 2025 would be anything from 2000 to 2000 and basically 18 would be a very recent study for what we're going through because this takes so much time and you have to follow the people for so long to make sure that it's actually working. Now, the inverse effect is unfortunate and that's why p-values are so important because we want to make sure the things that we are doing are working and not making the problem worse. There's a lot of things that we'll talk about in the next episode about creating that inverse effect and where you're trying to lower alcohol use, substance use, whatever that might be. The program being implemented might actually make it to where you're increasing the result you're trying to decrease. And that's something that we are trying to make you aware of by understanding some p-values. All right, and just to be clear, I don't wanna make just the D.A.R.E. program be called out. There's way more than just the D.A.R.E. program that aren't working. That's just one thing that's a very common thing that's out there that may or may not work as well as other programs. So that's why I suggest looking for independent studies, 
finding different p-values and figuring out other things that could work. Now, obviously, we only went over one effective example of something that is proven to work through statistical analysis by the p-values showing that it works. If you have anything that you use that you want to share with us, please comment, talk to us about it, let us know how it's going. Now, if you have a program that we talked about such as DARE, keeping it real, do peer counseling, or maybe have some zero tolerance policies or punitive policies that work in your area, let us know. We'd love to hear about it and have some open discussion. If you do any evaluation that shows that these things do work, please let us know. We all want to hear. We just want to do the right thing for our communities and make them to where substance use is less. Now, at the end of the day, there's always someone who's funding you or a boss you have that's really going to have the end, basically, say on what you do, what you don't do. It's important to remember what we've gone over, making sure that you can understand and talk about p-values that would be used to show whether a program is effective or isn't, and kind of knowing the things that are and are not effective. I bring this up because right after COVID, there was a big national meeting that I got invited to with the state of Wyoming to show up and just see what they're talking about related to this new best prevention program that the government was sending out at the time. Basically, what happened was Illinois was given a presentation on a program that they had started that came from D.C. that they were excited about to give to all their students and gave a huge long talk that was hour or so long. And at the end of the period, basically, they asked if there was any questions and no one asked any questions. So, of course, I hopped on just to ask, hey, what is the statistical significance showing that your program is working and is effective and not actually causing the inverse? Now, the lady didn't really know how to answer the question and basically deferred to the guy from D.C. Now, the guy from D.C. gave an answer, but it was basically a runaround. They hadn't really had a bunch of statistical studies done yet, and you could see that the program was very new. And there's nothing wrong with implementing a program that's new as long as the ideas behind it have already been proven to work in other things that have been studied, which is a good thing. But we personally, as a program, only do things that have been proven to work, not things that may work. And on that note, I'm super excited to see you guys in the future. We've got great things to go over. We've got theories of crime. We've got evaluation and how we know what works and why we know it does work. See you next time.